Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at habang tayo ay uh, <clears throat> nagiging normal ang ating uh, uh, sitwasyon ay nababawasan dahil sa mga nagtatrabaho na siguro ang madami, nababawasan yung ating uh, taga uh, yung ating nakasama. Wala. Ah, nawalan tayo. Meron, meron na. Okay. Sorry. So nababawasan tayo ng nababawasan ang ating ano at uh, naiintindihan natin niya na sila ay mga nagtatrabaho na at marahil yung iba naman ay um, nalalapit na rin yung kanilang pagtatrabaho. So anyhow, let us continue what we have started and then we will see if we're going to continue this or maybe we're going to do it maybe um, we'll see what we what we're going to do okay tayo po ay magtutuloy sa ating pag-aaral sa Genesis uh, 4 1 to 5 yan po ay uh, istorya ni Cain so pinag-aaralan natin si Cain ngayon dahil napag-aaralan na natin yung uh, ang dami na nating napag-aaralan hindi ko na matandaan so praise the Lord and I hope and I pray na kayo po ay nabless. So ang atin pong pinag-aaralan sa mga oras na ito ay ang istorya ni Cain at si Cain ang isang picture ng isang sabi nga ay talagang doomed sinner. O, yun talagang uh, ang sentensya na o, ang kanyang patutunguhan ay um, <clears throat> impyerno sabi nga. If you're going to look at uh, John 3.18, minsan na naalala ko lang minsan. Naalala ko lang ito. John 3.18, ang sabi po doon, dahil may mga nagsasabi na uh, <clears throat> uh, may nagtanong sa, sa akin minsan na uh, if God is electing people to, to be saved, so does God elect people to go to hell? So sabi ko, of course not. Hindi yan, uh, actually, ang desire ng Panginoon ay lahat tayo ay maligtas. Kaya ang iba ay nasa hell at kaya ang iba ay mapupunta sa hell is because what they 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 ignore and they neglected uh, the offer of God the grace of God of salvation kaya nga kung makikita niyo sa John 3:18 ang sabi rito he who believes in him is not condemned ang nanampalataya daw ay hindi na hinahatulan but he who does not believe is condemned already so it's not it's not God who brought them to to condemnation. It is them because they don't believe. So, okay. Now, tayo po ay nasa Genesis uh, chapter four, one to five. At uh, basahin po natin ulit. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, "I have acquired a man from the Lord." Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Verse 2. Now Abel was keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord reached respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So we have, uh, I think this is the third day that we have, we have been talking about Cain, Abel, and the first family. Actually, they are the first family. Um, and we, we will continue our study about Cain, the picture of a doomed sinner. Like what I have said last, last night, uh, sabi ko kahapon, walang, no, see, who better understand what it means to be lost? Who better understand? Those people who were lost before, right? Tayo, tayong mga ligtas, dahil once upon a time, we were lost. So, we understand what is being lost, what is being in sin. Right? So, I believe, mga kapatid, 
Adam and Eve better understands that it what what it means to be lost. I mean, who really who really who better understood what it mean what it meant to fall victim to Satan? Adam and Eve, right? Similarly, tayo rin, naging biktima tayo nun eh. Alam natin. Yung testimony ng bawat isa, nang wala pa tayo sa Panginoon, sa ating mga pinagdaanan sa buhay, kung gaano tayo naging pasaway, maniwala kay sa akin, kung marerendahan at tatalian lang natin ang ating mga anak na wag sundan ang ating mga yapak, gagawin natin. Right? Like what I've said last night. Kasi naranasan natin. Tama? Dahil ayaw nating maranasan nila kung ano yung naranasan natin noon na walang uh, patutunguhan o walang um, uh, direksyon. Kaya ako'y naniniwala na yan din ang ginawa ni Adan at ni Eva doon sa kanilang dalawang anak, kay Eva, kay Cain at kay Abel. Listen, nang time na yun, wala pang uh, pwedeng pagkaabalahan. Wala pang TikTok, wala pang, wala pang iPhone or iPad, wala pang TV. Wala pang mall na pagpapasyalan. Marahil pagkatapos magsaka ni Adan ay wala silang gagawing mag-anak kundi pagkakain ay mag-usap. Wala pang teleserye nung time na yun. How many times do you think Adam sat with boys, with those boys, on his knee? How many times do you think Eve sat down on the table at the table and told them what Eden was, or the paradise was like. Right? What the garden was like. At ako, I'm pretty sure, hindi isang beses o dalawang beses o minsan lamang yan nasabi o pinagstoryahan o itinuro ng mag-asawang ito, ni Eva at ni Adan, sa kanilang mga anak. Kung ano ang marahil sinabi rin nila, kung ano yung nasayang na biyaya na dulot ng kanilang pagsuway. Di ba? Ganyan tayo sa ating mga anak, right? Makailang beses kaya nagsumamo at nakiusap si Adan at Eva sa dalawa nilang anak na ito, ito na, ang mga ito na manampalataya sila sa Diyos at sa mga pangako ng Diyos. On His, uh, on his promise, on God's promises. Dahil ang mga pangako ng Diyos ay nagdudulot sa kanila ng kagalakan, ng blessing, at yung pangako ni Satanas, ang dulot ay kapigatian, kamatayan, ng destruction. Remember, si, maral sinasabi nila, alam niyo mga anak, nung hindi pa kami natutok sa ni, 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 ni Satanas, nung ahas, wala kaming problema. Wala kaming, walang negative. Walang pawis, walang, walang, walang pagod, walang, wala lahat. Pero buhat nung kami ay Matemp at mag kami sa temptation, kami nagkasala. Naranasan namin ang lahat ng negatives. Lahat ng sakit, pagod, hirap, gutom, pawis. I mean, really, I can't imagine anybody better equipped to get the message across than the two people who were thrown out of paradise. Dahil na-experience nila, kagaya ng sabi ko, ang paradise, but they couldn't, they, but they could could tell them what it was like. Kasi galing sila ron, naranasan na nilang experience sa paraiso. Alam niyo, malaking paniniwala ko na paulit-ulit yang itinuturo ni Eva at ni Adan sa mga anak niya. Paano ako nakasiguro? Kasi nang isulat ni Moses ang Genesis, si Moses ang nagsulat daw nito, sabi ng mga theologians, nang isulat ni Moses ang, ang, ang Genesis, detalyado. How many years before na isulat ito ni, ni, ni Moses? Pero in detail. Anong ibig sabihin? Ibig sabihin, dahil nga paulit-ulit na itong sinasabi ng mag-asawa, I believe na memorize na ito at naipasa-pasa hanggang sa sulatin ni Moses. With the leading of the Holy Spirit, of course. Hindi na naging mahirap kay Moses. Bakit? Kasi lagi-lagi na, lagi-lagi, kaya nga ako ay paulit-ulit sa aking mga anak, paulit-ulit ako sa aking mga anak upang ma-memorize na, upang uh, pumasok na sa kanilang isip, pumasok na sa kanilang puso. And I believe ganyan ang ginawa nila. And that is one of the signs na talagang 
itinuro ni ni Ebat ni Adan sa kanyang mga anak at sa mga sumusunod na henerasyon. Bakit? Kasi nung isulat ni Moses, detalyadong detalyado. Alam niyo hindi lamang ako naniniwalang maraming beses silang sinabihan ni, Ka, uh, ni Naka, sila Cain at Abel na manampalataya at sumunod sa kalooban ng Diyos at manampalataya ang tutuparin niya ang kanyang mga pangako. Naniniwala rin ako mga kapatid na madalas o palagi silang pinapaalalahanan ang magkapatid na ito na magsisi at manampalataya. Manampalatayang ang Diyos sa takdang panahon ay tutuparin niya ang kanyang sinabi sa Genesis 3.15 which is to send someone who would break bruise the serpent's head and overthrow this usurper and bring, bring back the paradise. I believe, I firmly believe, madalas yan na sinasabi sa magkapadil. Kaya nga hindi nakapagtataka na, na, na nag-o-offer silang magkapadil, right? Kasi they, they were not there were no doubt told that you need to honor God. You need to show respect, worship toward God. I believe sinabi yan lahat ni Ebat ni Adan. Kasi hindi nakapagtataka na nag-o-offer sila magkapatid. So Cain bought an offering. This is an act of worship. I believe mga kapatid, ito ginawa ni Cain not only because he was commanded by his parents, but very likely a command from God. Hindi nakasulat sa Genesis. Ha? Walang sinabi sa Genesis na nag-command ang Diyos such offerings. Meron bang sinabi sa Genesis na ganito kayo mag-offer? Ito ang tamang offering? Walang sinabi. Pero alam nyo, sa common people, sa common tao, foolishness ang patungkol saan? Sa worship. Tama? Sabi sa Corinthians. Patungkol sa spirituality, patungkol sa cross of Jesus Christ, which is the, the spirituality, Foolishness sa kanila yan. So if God didn't command them, I don't think maging si Abel, hindi mag-worship. Foolishness nga sa tao eh. So it has to be there. God has to command so that they will do what God commanded them to do. Okay, maybe siguro, Pastor, hindi naman siguro kay, kay Cain at Abel ibinigay ang kuman baka sa mga magulang, even though kung ibinigay ito kay, kay Adan at kay Eva, itinuro nila ito sa kanilang mga anak sa dalawang ito na it is a command by God to worship. Now, the word offering here is M-I-N-A, Mina in Hebrew, and it's a word Later used in Leviticus to refer to the offering that the Lord instituted in the Mosaic Law sa Leviticus chapter 2. Now, wala na sila sa Eden. Wala na sila sa paradise, right? Nasa labas sila ng paradise. How far were there? Were these people from, uh, from the paradise? We never know. Pero nasa labas sila ng paradise. Ano kaya ang feeling, mga kapatid? Ano kaya ang feeling? I mean, alam mo kung nasa ng paradise. Marahil natatanaw nila ang paradise. Ano kaya ang feeling? Parang ganito yan eh, na nag-aaral ako sa UI sa may Lipanto. May kinakainan akong isang tapsilog restaurant. Hindi ko matandaan kung magkano. Mura pa yata, no? mga 6, 12, 12 pesos yata o yatang may anim na pirasong tapa, isang itlog na maliit, sinangag, at tubig. Okay? Pag ubos ng allowance ko, dalawang araw pa lang, ubos ng allowance ko eh, doon ako kumakain. So walang aircon yun. Pero yung katapat, may magandang restaurant. Mahal, air condition, kumpleto. Dalawang ulam, unlimited rice, may soft drinks o juice. May panghimagas pa na fruit salad o kaya leche plant. Yan ang feeling. Right? Sayang kung hindi ko lang sana ginastos lahat. Sana doon din ako kumakain. Unlimited ang kanin, dalawang ulam, may panghimagas pa, may soft drinks pa. Ganon din ang feeling nila marahil ng time na yon. 
Sayang kung sumunod lang sana kami sa Diyos, nandun pa rin sana kami. Right? They couldn't go back anymore. But they could still what? Worship. And it was right to worship God because God could be worshiped wherever they were really are. Kaya nga sabi ng John 4, God is not confined to Mount Garrison. He's not confined to Jerusalem, right? And God is to be worshipped everywhere in spirit and in truth. Alam niyo pa ang isa pang dahilan kung bakit ako naniniwalang ang instruction na ito ng Diyos na mag-offer sila ng sacrifice ay tinuro sa magkapatid na ito. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi there had been an altar built. Right? Sabi nun, uh, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also fruit of the first, the flock, uh, and the, his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. There is an altar. How do I know? Nagtagpo sila magkapatid doon. Ibig sabihin, there's a place wherein they will place, they will put their offerings, right? So they know. They know a certain place that they will worship God. So, so paano yun? Bigla na lang nilang naisip? No, definitely not. I believe yan itinuro sa kanila. And it is most in academic na ang sacrifice, lalo na sa Old Testament, Nasa altar mo dadalin ang sacrifice, so may altar. And to that altar comes Cain, and with him the fruit of the ground. He brought what he had, what? Harvested. Well, walang nabanggit kung ito ba ay first fruit. You know, later, yung, yun, yun ang kailangan to fulfill the Mosaic law. God demanded the first part of the crop, right? Kaya I'm not convinced doon sa komentary na kasi ang handog ni Cain ay bunga na sinumpa. Dahil galing daw sa lupa. I don't think so. Kasi kung ganyan ang pamantayan ng Diyos, di na, di na sana niya ipinagutos na maghandog ang Israelita sa first fruit that comes in which a real act of faith that means you recognize Him first and the promise of Scripture is if you do that, God will make sure the rest of the crop is good and fill your barns. So, hindi na sana sasabihin ng Panginoon na huwag na kayo maghando. Wow. Huwag na kayo maghando ng first fruit kasi galing yan sa sinumpang lupa. Right? Now, you know, I'm pretty sure that they were very aware that God wanted the best. Alam nila yan. Maging yan ako, mga kapatid, naniniwalang itinuro ni Adan at ni Eva sa kanilang mga anak dahil itinuro naman yan sa kanila ng Diyos. Pero walang, walang nasabi with regard to the nature of what Cain offered, right? It doesn't say he brought the first of a given crop. It doesn't say he brought the best. It just says he brought of the fruit of the ground. Pero dahil nga walang sinabing ganyan, ang usual na commentary is that He didn't bring necessary the first or the best. But who knows kung ang dinala niya is the best? Who knows kung ang handog ni 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 Cain ay yung pinaka magandang bunga? Pero dahil wala nang sinabi, eh wala rin naman sinabi diyan na ang kinuha lang ni Cain ay ordinaryong bunga. O pwede ng bunga. At, at may punto yan. Kasi nga naman, bakit yung kay Abel ay talagang identified and described exactly, right? May, may punto. I'm not saying that is wrong. So most probably, or perhaps, hindi talaga best ang offering ni Cain. I'm not saying it's wrong, but most probably. Siguro ay normal lang. Although hindi sinabi, siguro ay normal lang. Hindi yung the best. At isa pang bagay na significant dito, kapansin-pansin dito, ay hindi si Cain nag-offer ng hayop, ng animal. Mga, bat- mga kapatid, listen to me. Kung itinuro ng Diyos na dapat ay mag-worship o mag-offer sila, 
Hindi ba dapat itinuro din ng Diyos ang tamang handog o ang tamang sacrifice? Right? Kasi importante ang mag-offer at ang i-offer. Importante sa Diyos yan. Kaya nga I believe, sinabi ng Panginoon na kung ano ang tamang sacrifice at kung ano ang tamang isa-sacrifice. Kaya nga maging hanggang ngayon, tinuturuan tayo ng Diyos kung papaano ang tamang pagsamba. Paano? Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Ano ibig sabihin? Ang spirito hindi nakikita. Okay, kapag sumamba ka na may ron ka nang nakikita, nahahawa ka, napupunas, punasan o nahahalik-halikan, hindi na yan spirit. Dahil ang spirit walang buto at laman. Hindi material. Hindi mo nahahawakan. At sabi pa, in truth, ano ba ang truth? Sabi sa John 17, 17, your word is truth. So ang tamang pagsamba ay sa espiritong hindi nakikita, pero alam mong nasa sa'yo, nananahan sa'yo na nakabase sa salita ng Panginoon. Na yun ang katotohanan. Right? Kaya nga pagsamba ay labas na dyan. Pagsamba na labas na dyan, hindi na yan tunay na pagsamba. Pag meron ng hinahawakan at hindi na nakabase sa salita ng Panginoon, strike to na yan. Hindi yan tunay na pagsamba. Okay? Hindi pwedeng mawala ang isa sa isa't isa. And so I'm convinced that God had instructed them to bring an animal sacrifice. I believe. At, and I believe, alam din ni Cain na ang tamang sacrifice is animal. Walang sinabi sa Bible, it's just my commentary. Why? Eh kasi nga, bakit ko nasabi yan? Eh kasi nga, dahil kung ang, sabi nga ng Bible, we, were create, we are created by God to worship Him. Eh. So, if we are created by God to worship Him, naturally, ibibigay ng Panginoon kung paano ang tamang pag-worship. So that is why I believe the very reason why hindi tinanggap yung offering ni Cain, it's not because um, hindi best yung kanyang prutas o hindi good ang kanyang prutas o whatever is yung kanyang inihandog ay prutas kung hindi dahil hindi siya sumunod dahil ang itinuro ng Diyos ang tamang pagsamba ng time na yon ay to bring or to slaughter animal. Talam nyo kung bakit convince ako na iniuto sa kanila ang animal sacrifice? Kasi merong demonstration o actual na ginawa na kailangan ng isa sang may mamatay to cover the sinner. Saan yan demonstration na yan? O saan yung illustration na yan? O yung picture na yan? Sa Genesis 3 verse 21. Ano ang sabi? Basa. And the Lord God made for Adam and Eve and his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Said Pastor John, wala naman yata dyang sinabi na mag-slaughter ng animal. Do you think makukuha mo ang balat ng animal na gagawin mong pandamit kila Adan at Eva na hindi mo papatayin ang animal? Di ba? So naturally, kailangan patayin ng Panginoon yung animal to get the skin. At kagaya ng sabi ko nga sa inyo, covering or, or garments, garments is usually what? A picture of salvation. So this is a picture how to be saved. How to be saved is somebody need to die. And that is what Jesus Christ did in the cross of Calvary for us. A living sac- uh, 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 sacrificial lamb that died on our behalf. Then, siguro may magsasabi naman ng philosopher, PJ, pwede namang wag nang pumatay ng, ang Diyos ng uh, animal eh, para kasi Diyos siya, may power siya. He can do that without killing any animal. Yes, he can. There's no doubt about it. Pero if he do that, kung gaano gawin niya 'yon? So hindi natin makikita na sa Genesis pa lang ang picture o ang 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 ano ba magandang term doon? 
pic, but yung picture ng gagawin ng Panginoong Hesus na ang picture ng kamatayan ng Panginoong Hesus ay para sa katubusan nating mga kasalanan. Hindi natin malakikita sa Genesis. Pero dahil dito, ipinakita yan ng Panginoon, nakita natin ngayon na yun pala ang ginawa ng Panginoon. So hindi natin masasa, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na si Kristo lang naman ay sa New Testament. No. He's even there in the Old Testament at the very beginning of the world. Okay? And like what I've said, killing an innocent a sacrifice was a picture of yon substitution, 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 substitution ba? Substitution, substitutionary death of an innocent victim to provide a covering for the sinner. Siya ang naging substitute. Kaya nga ang sabi nung he's the ransom for many. He he paid the penalty. He is the substitute on our behalf. Dapat tayo na andon. Kaya nga ako mga kapatid na niniwalang itinuro ito, yung lahat ng detalye ng pangingon, especially worship and sacrifices, because that is very important. That is what is important to God. What is important to God is worship and sacrifices. Napaka-importante niya sa Diyos. Yan ang dahilan. Kaya tayo nilalang for worship, for His glory. Tapos hindi niya sasabihin ang detalye? Hindi siguro. Sabihin yan in detail. Kaya nga, if your priority in life is to worship God, well, you have the same priority of the Lord. So you so, so here you have Cain giving no recognition that he is a sinner. No recognition that he is a sinner. Sa so, pastor bakit? Kasi hindi nga sumunod sa iaalay eh. At alam niyo mga kapatid, ako naniniwala lang yung offering ni Cain is a self righteous offering. Yan yung sinasabing hmm, tatanggapin naman siguro ito ng Diyos. Di ba? Hmm, maintindihan naman siguro kami ng Panginoon. Hmm, ganito, okay na naman siguro ito, matutuwa ang Diyos. No. Kahit anong ganda ng inyong offerings, kahit anong ganda ng inyong, o kano kalaki ang inyong offerings, mga kapatid, if that is not within the parameter of His Word, and not with the conviction of the Holy Spirit, wala. That is self-righteous offering. Kinakailangan when we offer, it should be within the parameter. It should be within the word of God. And for His glory. Unang-una, sabi ko nga, alam niya na at sure ako na itinuro ng Diyos ang tamang handong ng time na yun. Kasi later pa lang yun, grain offerings. Later pa lang yun, grain offerings. Secondly, dahil nga hindi yun ang iniutos ng Diyos, it appears to have been an offering of self-righteous human achievement. So human achievement, kanyang ano lang. Now listen to me, listen. There are only two ways you can approach God. Only two ways to approach God. Una, you approach God by offering Him what you've achieved. Kung anong yung na-achieve. So it looks kain. Now, pangalawa, you approach God realizing that you deserve death And you recognize that by offering a sacrifice in death as a symbol of the need for a substitute who can die in your place by which your sin can be covered. That is the second approach. Na ikaw ay lalapit sa Diyos na, alam mo na, Panginoon, hindi po ako karapat-dapat. At inihandog ko po ang aking sarili sa iyo, O Diyos, buhay na handog. Hindi po ako karapat-dapat, Panginoon. At narito po ako dahil kay Kristo Jesus na namatay para sa akin. Without that, mga kapatid, you cannot approach the Lord. Ibig sabihin, without recognizing, without recognize, uh, recognizing that you are a sinner, that you deserve to die, and you are not recognizing that through Jesus Christ only, 
you receive that salvation, kapatid, kung hindi mo yan tanggap, na ikaw ay makasalanan, hindi ka nagsisi sa kasalanan mo, nanampalataya kay Chris. Kaya nga, when, when, when we evangelize, di ba, una natin sinasabi, tayo ay makasalanan. Right? At ang kabayaran ng kasalanan, kamatayan. And then, pero ang bigay ng Diyos, buhay na walang hanggan, kay Kristo Jesus. Right? So you have to establish your relationship with Him. You have to repent from your sin and establish your relationship with Him. Acknowledge Him as your Lord and Savior. Why? Because He is the one who died for you. At kung hindi siya namatay, hindi ka matutubos sa iyong kasalanan. That's the only approach. Kaya nga mga kapatid, yung mga tao na nagsasabing si Kristo ay hindi Diyos, yung mga tao na ang kanilang pagkakakilala ay Kristo ay how shall, how shall. I'm telling you this. Their worship is not pleasing to God. It's not pleasing to God. Yun ang sinasabi na ano, uh, sa Old Testament na uh, strange fire. Hindi nakalulugod sa Panginoon. Yun ang sinasabi ni uh, sa New Testament na uh, clouds without water. Hindi kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon. Kaya nga, ikaw at ako na ngayon ay may ganap at tunay na relasyon sa Panginoon. Ikaw at ako na tunay na nampalatay sa Panginoon Jesus na siya ay nabuhay, na, na, na matay, inilibing at nabuhay na maguli para sa katubusan ng ating mga kasalanan. Kapatid, when you say, praise you Lord, and you say, oh, I thank you Lord, I worship you Lord, I'm telling you, God is pleased. God is pleased. See? So, it looks kind didn't have any recognition of the sin. It looks like that. Mas lalo nating makikita yan as the story goes on. And also, it looks kind didn't think nor acknowledge that he needed substitutory, substitutionary death on his behalf. Or substitute on his behalf. Na hindi niya ipinakita na isa siyang makasalanan na worth to be killed and to escape on the judgment na kailangan niya ng isang innocenting substitute to die on his behalf. Bakit nalaman ni Abel ang tamang paghahandog? Kasi yun ang itinuro. At kung alam niya, I believe sa haba ng panahon na silang mag-inalamang mag o mag-anak lamang nagkukwentuhan, marahil na itanong din ni Abel na, Mami, Mami Eva, bakit? Kailangan animals ang ihandog. Marahil sinabi ni Eva na it is because yan ay picture o yan ay ang illustration ng ating inaasahan na darating sa hinaharap. Na kung saan yung ahas ay tatapakan sa ulo. Right? And you know what? That is my friend is the fine example of false religion. Can you see that? Here is the first example of the religion of human achievement where somebody gives to God what they produce with, with no recognition of the necessity of atonement by substitution in death. This is false religion. Here is self-righteousness. Later on, as I said, sabi ko nga sa Levitical law, you can see in Deuteronomy 26 as well, sa Leviticus 2, grain offerings were prescribed by God. Grain offerings were to serve as a reminder that God was the source of all their food. They were thank offerings. Okay? Pero ang pinaka-primary and, uh, and necessary offering ay yung animal sacrifice. Kasi yun ang sumasalamin. Yun, picture. Diba sumasalamin yun eh? O nagpapatunay na kailangang merong dapat substitute para mamatay para sa ating mga kasalanan. Okay, verse 4. Ito na yung tamang pagsama. Si Abel. And Abel... On his part, brought of firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. Eto ibang iba. Sabi ni Abel, sabi Abel brought anim brought animals, but not just animals. His offering is actually the fattest of the firstlings, the best of the best. Now listen, 
Ang ipinagdidiin nandito mga kapatid ay yung quality ng handog. You got me? As well as the character of it. Character ng handog. What we see with Cain's offering was he brought something which reflected his own achievement with no particular regards for its what? Quality. It seems, kinuha lang niya, basta. Ibig sabihin, hindi pinaghandaan, hindi pinagplanuhan, basta lang, kung ano lang ang nadampot. On the other hand, kay Abel, he brings the best of the best, offering an animal as a symbol of his own need to have seen covered by the death of an innocent substitute. Alam nyo, dahil ang handog niya ay the best animals, the best animal, the best first links, ibig sabihin, kasi para kasing lumalabas dito, si, si, si Cain parang nagmamadali. Eh. Parang, eh, ito na lang. Siguro, nung pupunta na siya doon sa altar, may nadaan na siya mga pros, ito na lang ang daling kong handog. Pero I believe si Abel, gabi pa lang marahil o ilang araw pa lang marahil bago maghandog, ay nasa isip niya na o namimili na siya kung ano ang kanyang ihandog. Similarly, ganyan din sa church, di ba? Kung talagang, kung talagang tayo talaga ay ang nais natin ay makasalamuha ang ating mga kapatiran to worship corporately, gabi pa lang naghahanda na tayo. Hindi eh. Yung iba, sinundo na, ang tagal na nag-aantay nung nanunundo. Ay, nakalimutan ko prad eh. <laughs> Friday pa lang ngayon. I believe Abel is ready. Marahil Thursday pa lang o Wednesday pa lang nakahanda na yung kanyang panghandog. Tayo po ba ganun? Pero yung kay, kay Cain, ibig sabihin, hindi pinaghandaan, hindi pinagplanuhan, basta lang kung ano lang ang madampot o kung ano lang ang madaanan. Right? And all those animal sacrifices of Old Testament were simply pictures of one sacrifice that actually takes away sin, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So I think it's important to realize that God must have given them instruction regarding animal sacrifice. There's no doubt about it. I don't doubt about it. At hindi lamang animal sacrifice yung pinaka-best. Walang bangis na handong na siyang picture na ginawa ng Panginoon Jesus sa krus ng Kalbaryo. This is a sacrifice that recognizes sin and death and that need for substitute. Abel did what was right. He was the true expression of worship rather than Cain. And the end of verse 4, here's the most notable things at this point. The Lord had regard for Abel and for his offerings. Now listen to me. Notice carefully. This is very careful language. And I want you to understand it. Sabi, the Lord had regard. Ano ibig sabihin? Tinanggap ng Diyos. Tama? Now, look. Dalawang bagay ang tinanggap o regard ng Diyos dito. Dalawang bagay ang tinanggap ng Diyos dito. Una, o ano yung uh, na-regard na, na niya? Ano? Una. Ano ang sabi? The Lord had regard for whom? Abel. And for? His offerings. See? God accepted or God regarded Abel, the offerer, and his offerings. See that? The worshiper or giver and the offerings. At mga kapatid, maging kayong, ma ma makinig tayo mabuti. May dahilan yan kung bakit may distinction. Kung bakit magkahiwalay na Abel and his offerings. Alam niyo kung bakit? Unang-una, God regard for Abel, which means, alam ng Diyos na malinis ang puso ni Abel. Tama? Which means, God regard for Abel's spirit, Abel's attitude, Abel's character, ta character, Abel's faith. All about Abel. At isa lang masasabi ko sa inyo lahat, mga kapatid. Ang lahat ng yan patungkol kay Abel, hindi mo yan makikita sa labas ng isang tao. Tama? All of that is from within, from inside. And if it's from within, 
Walang ibang makakakita niyan kung hindi sino? Ang Diyos. What does it mean? It means that God looks at the heart. Heart is the very center of human being, of man. And here was a man who worshipped God with his heart. He was a lover of God. He was, was a believer in God. He was a man with a righteous heart. And that's why it says the Lord had regard for a man. And secondly, look here. Now, look at this. Like what I've said, it's from within, inside, right? Look the the outside manifestation of what is inside. Look at the outside manifestation of what God regarded or accepted, sabi ng verse, and his offerings. That's the outside, right? That's the outside manifestation of what is inside. And what is inside? Pure. That is why his offering is what? Right. He got a right offering. An animal. The best firstling. Why? Because his heart is pure. Now listen, paano naging tama yung offering ni Abel? Kasi si Abel nag-offer what God, what? Required. And if you offer what God required in His Word, it means that you have what? A pure heart. Amen? A pure heart. That's what I long for. Right? Now, Look at 1 John 3.12. Anong sabi? Last part. Abel's behavior was what? Righteous. Ibig sabihin, ang ginawa niya ay ano? Tama. Now listen to me. Listen. We are surrounded with so many issues in the Philippines. Right? Here. Here in the Philippines, wherever. Hindi na natin malaman kung sino ang tama o sino ang mali. Tama? Tama? Nung isang, minsan ako may nabasa, isang past, dalawang pastora nagpakasal. Pastil. Dalawang pastora nagpakasal. Dalawang violation na. Unang-una, walang pastora sa Bible. Pangalawa, same-sex marriage pa sila. At ito maganda, ang nagkasal sa kanila, pastor din. Ang mga mana ng palataya, nahihirati na ng makipagrelasyon sa hindi mga mana ng palataya. Kasi daw naman, may mas parang mas mabait pa yung mga unbelievers kaysa sa mga believer. One thing I'll tell you. Sa sampu kong na counsel na magkarelasyon sa unbeliever, ang napakasalan ay hindi mana ng palatay nung una. Sampu din ang bumalik at nagsabing kung maibabalik ko lang ang nakaraan, iba ang pipiliin ko. Now and then and then and then you ask PJ, how do you do what is right? See, listen to me. You do what is right by doing what God has said to be done. E PJ, parang hindi na kasi ngayon eh, kasi parang I don't mind. I don't mind. If that is what God is saying, I don't. Pastor kasi na ma-open natin sila eh. Pastor kasi parang imbis yata na lumapit sila sa Panginoon eh, magalit sila sa Panginoon dahil na-offend sila. I don't care. As long as what I'm saying is from the Word of God and what what God has said to be done, I don't care kung ma-offend sila. Of course, I care. Pero sabihin mo na, I, uh, uh, I will care na hindi ko sasabihin yun para hindi sila ma- I don't. Minsan po ako ay sinabihan nila ng, at sinabihan ako na eh mukhang hindi sila lalapit sa Panginoon sa so the way you say, you're saying it eh. Sabi ko sa kanila, you know what? It's been a long time na tayo mga Kristiyano at mga mana ng palatay ay no offend but we never speak. We never talk. Napakaraming beses na na ino-offend nila ang Diyos. And when God is offended, I'm offended. And I think this is the time to preach His Word boldly without compromise. 
Kaya nga ngayon, ganyan na sila eh. Bakit? Kasi ang church, ano na ang church? Napasuka na ng politika, napasuka na ng um, social justice, napasuka na ng kung ano-ano ng rights. Pero have we ever taught God's right? God's rights? Paano yung kanyang, paano yung kanyang karapatan bilang hari na siya ay dapat sundin kung anong kanyang sinabi ay dapat sundin? Paano yung karapatan niya bilang hari na kung sabi niya ay kasalanan itong ganito ay kasalanan? I mean, really, kung sinabi ng Bible na huwag ka makipamatok sa hindi mana ng palataya, o kung sinabihan ka ng Bible, Kuya Will, asan si Kuya Will, na huwag kang makipamatok, ibig sabihin, huwag kang uh, do not be equally yoke when unbeliever, abe, huwag ka, kasi hodang tumandang binata ka, Kuya Will, abe, magpakadandang binata ka, na as long as you are following what God is saying, at bibigyan ka ng Panginoon. Basta sinunod mo ang Diyos. Listen to me. Kung ang gagamitin yung pamantayan ay ang pamantayan ng inyong nakikita at hindi ang salita ng Panginoon, maniwala kayo sa akin. Uuwi kayong luhaan. Makinig kayo sa akin. Sa sampu kong kinounsel na hindi mana ng palataya ang asawa o nung magpakasal sila, hindi mana ng palataya. Sampu rin ang bumalik at nagsabi, kung maibabalik ko lang sana ang kahapon. Nakisig, nakinig sana ako sa inyo, Pastor. Now, the heart of Abel was right. God had regard for Abel and the sacrifice of Abel was right. God had regard for his offering. Verse 5, para matapos tayo agad. Basa, but, God, but Cain and for his offerings, he had no regard. So dyan sa, sa, dyan sa dalawang realidad na yan, ating makikita yan, God had no regard for whom? Cain. That's the inside. The man. His heart. And he had no regard for his what? Offering either. And that is what? The external manifestation of what is in the heart. That was the fruit of the ground which he brought. Ibig sabihin, wala sa puso niya ang paghandog. Cain's heart was evil. He was of the evil one. Sabi ng Jude, right? Naalala nyo? Jude 11 yata yun or 13? Kabilang siya kay Balam, kay Korah, who rebelled against the Lord. False teachers ang kanyang affiliation, association. At sabi nga doon eh, whom the blackness and darkness has been reserved forever. So Cain is the prototype of doom religious religious man in incurably religious sabi niya. Hindi mo na magamot. All the religions of human achievements. So what you see with doom people is hopeful beginning but very soon a pattern of what? Unacceptable worship. And wrong worship is characterized by what? Self-righteousness. All people get involved in all kinds of religion. Believe me. But not the truth. Mga kapatid, ang tinatanggal lamang ng Diyos ay yung katotohanan. Ah, ang tinatanggap, sorry, ang tinatanggap lamang ng Diyos ay yung katotohanan. You got me? True worship looks at yung may substitute for atonement of the sacrificial lamb, namely Jesus Christ who alone can take away our sins. Yan lang ang pagsamba na tatanggapin ng Diyos. Okay? Sabi yun, napaka ano mo naman, Pastor. Sorry. Yan lang talaga. At ang hindi ganyan pa sistema ng pagsamba, we call that false religion that will lead you to hell. Now, let me give you a third, third point. Last na to. Unbelievers have What? Hopeful beginnings. First, they offer an acceptable worship. Here's the third one. Unbelievers hate true believers. Verse 5. Last part. So Cain, what? Became very, what? Angry. And his continence fell. 
They hate us because of our what? Narrowness! Ha? Huh? Napaka-unfair naman ng Diyos nyo. Kayo lang ang ligtas. Ibig sabihin, kahit gumawa ko ng mabuti, hindi ako mabuti sa langit. Makiti daw ang ating mga pag-iisip. Bakit nga naman? Kasi daw, sa kapwa believer lang dapat makipagrelasyon. Judgmental daw tayo. Eh, sinasabi lang naman natin, salita ng Panginoon. Sabihin natin sa kanila, all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Judgmental ka naman. Ayaw daw nating lumigaya ang iba. Bakit? Kasi ayaw daw nating tanggapin na may mga kalalakihan na ang kanilang kaligayahan ay kapwa kalalakihan. At ayaw daw nating tanggapin na may kababaihan na ang kanilang kaligayahan ay kapwa nila kababaihan. At ayaw daw nating tanggapin na merong mga pamilya na hindi na sila masayang nagsasama at yung asawa ay mahirati sa iba ay sa atin daw ay hindi katanggap-tanggap. Makiti daw ang ating utak dahil hindi wala daw tayong consideration sa divorce. Sa gay marriage. See? Galit sila sa atin dahil tayo daw ang tama at sila ay mali. They resent our righteousness. They resent our goodness. They resent our virtue. They resent the blessing of God. They love their sin. They are religious but they love their sin. Alam niyo kung bakit galit sila sa inyo? O sa atin? Kahit yung mga dati nating mga kaibigan. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi we are living, ano, a living rebuke to them. Kaya nga kung inyong mapapansin as much as possible, they want to keep us out of the public discourse. You know that? Alam nyo ba? Ito maganda eh. Alam nyo ba na pagka mayroong mga social issues and mga so many things, ganito, ganyan, 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 at may nag-post? Kahit ka mag-anak ko, at nakita kong hindi tama, ang biblical, sabihin ko agad ng verse. At kahit, and they, you know what they do? They ignore They ignore the words or they ignore the, the word of God that you have shared. They don't consider it. They want you out of the public discussion. They don't like it. It's not because it's bad. It is because, you know what? It is because it, it, it exposed them. Minsan nga, sinabihan ako doon sa issue, bilog ang mundo, flat out. Di ba, may naniniwala kasi ang mundo, flat. Hanggang ngayon. So, nung makita ko, nag-cite ako ng verse sa Isaiah at sa Job na ang mundo ay bilog. Ang sagot sa akin, no bearing daw ang Bible sa issue na yon So, sabi ko, ang Bible, verse na ito, no bearing? O, oh, kasi hindi raw po pwede na bigyan ng importansya yung testimony ng Bible. Eh, alam nyo, wag nyo akong, sabi ko sa kanila, wag nyo akong kakantiin ng biglaan. Pag kinantiin nyo kasi ako nung nagpiprepare ako, hindi ako makapag-isip. Pero pag biglaan, mabilis, mabilis kumilos yung isip ko. And I believe God is with me. Sabi ko sa kanila, i-ignore natin ang salita ng Panginoon? Eh, hindi nyo pa na-invento na, na hindi nyo pa na na didiskubre na bilog ang mundo. Sinabi na ng Bible na bilog ang mundo. Tapos ngayon, ignore nyo ang Bible? Kailan nyo lang na, na, na nalaman na bilog ang mundo? Nung malaman ni Ferdinand Magellan na bilog ang mundo, kailan yon? Kailan ang Bible sinulat? Hindi na sila nakaimik. And they ignore what I said. Ayaw na nila. And then may nagtanong, What about evolution? Okay, even evolution, sabi ko sa kanila. And then I say it again and then they just stop discussing about it. 
Bakit? Because it exposed them. Matatalino mga tao, mga professor, ha? mga doktor. Minsan nandun ako sa, nandun kami sa Las Vegas, nagpunta kami doon sa Grand Canyon. Katapos nakalagay doon, yun daw Grand Canyon, malalim kasi yun. Ang pinagmulan lang daw noon ay yung maliit na ilog, napakaliit na ilog. Sabi nung isa, sabi nung isang ano, uh, 150 years yata, na na kukay ng, ng maliit na ilog yung mga bato. Tapos may sumunod na parang frame, nire-refute yung 150 yata, o 250, ang inilagay niya, it's 150. 1,000 years. Basta, basta ganon. And then, meron na namang sumunod na sabi nila, yun daw mga previous ay hindi totoo. Ang sumunod naman daw is basta, iba-iba. And then, sabi ko sa kanila nung ako ay mag sa mga Amerikado, akala ko kayo mga smart. Tsaka matatalino. Sabi ko, hundred, hundred thousand of years or millions of years. 150 million pala. Yan, yan. 150 million years. Pagkatapos after 10 years, sasabihin nyo mali 150 million years. 50, 50 million years. Sumunod, so, ganyan, ganyan years. Sabi ko, I can show you in less than 30 seconds how it happened na nagkaroon ng ganyan. So, nakatingin sila sa akin. Just go to Genesis there was a big flood. That's why it happened like this. Wala pang 30 seconds. Tapos ang problema nyo. After 10 years, meron namang lalabas dyan. At sasabihin na naman nila na mali pala yung 150 million years. 50 million years. 20 million. Ewan ko kung ilang million years na ngayon sa kanila. They want to keep the Bible out of schools. They want the Bible out of the politics, the Bible out of social life, the Bible out of the culture. I'm, I'm talking about politics in the terms of hindi nila ito binibigyan na ng importansya. For example, kagaya ng divorce, hindi na nila kinunsulta ang Bible kung ano ba. Out of culture, out of the culture, out of everything. Alam niyo ang sabi ni Darwin? Si Charles Darwin, yung, nag, yung nag-tury na tayo ay galing sa unggoy. Eh, yun nga, sabi ko nga sa inyo, may chismis, o may sabi na, may write up ako nabasa na, nasave daw si Darwin. I hope so. Ang sabi ni Darwin nung, nung siya ay malakas pa at nung pinangangalandakan pa niya yung tury na tayo galing sa unggoy. I don't, re- sabi ni, si Darwin mismo to, ha? sabi niya, I don't reject the idea of God. See? Can you believe that? Si Darwin may sabi niyan, i-research niyo, I just reject the God of the Bible, ang sabi niya. Hindi eka ako naniniwala, hindi eka ako inaali sa isip ko na walang Diyos. Pero hindi ako naniniwala sa Diyos na nasa Biblia, sabi niya. I don't want anybody telling me this is the truth, ang sabi niya. Ayoko eka may magsasabi na itong Bible, itong salitang ito ang katotohanan. I don't want anybody telling me I'm a sinner. See? Ayaw niya. This is sin and I'm on my way to hell and I need to recognize that God provided a substitute to die in my place which is Jesus Christ who will take away my sin. Si Darwin naman yung sabi niya. That's what they reject. They resent the true believer. The, they said the true. They resent the true believers. Ayoko e ka. At yan si Cain. Unbelievers get angry about the believers. They get angry over the true believers. They get angry over those who say this is the true and this alone is the truth and this is the only way of salvation. Cain is self-righteous and he is stubborn. Oy, one hour na pala ako. Stubborn or self-righteous. He lacks any con- contrition. He lacks any remorse. Hindi man lang siya nagsisi sa maling handong na dala niya. Hindi siya nagsisi na kagaya ng kapatid niya ang dala ay tamang handaw. He's not even sorry about his disobedience. But rather, sa kabila ng lahat, siya pa ang may ganang, alam niyo kung ano? Magalit. And he became angry with whom? With his brother. Listen, alam niyo bang yung galit na yun sa kapatid niya ay masigit ang galit niya sa Diyos? 
You ask me why. Una, filosopon sagot niya. Hindi mo sasagutin ang tatay o nanay mo kahit boss mo kung mahal mo o may paggalang ka sa kanya. Tingnan niyo ang sagot niya. So the Lord, the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why your continence fallen? If you do well with you, sa verse 7, if you dare not accept, and if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now, Cain talked with Abel, with his brother, and then pagkatapos ng pagkatapos niya, patayin, anong sabi niya? Inanap sa kanya, di ba? Ang sabi niya, And he said, and then the Lord, 9, verse 9, And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? You know what he said? I do not know. Di ko alam. Am I my brother's keeper? Piluso po, tama? Hindi mo sasagutin ang tatay o nanay mo o kahit boss mo kung mahal mo o may paggalang ka sa kanya. Sasagot ka lang ng ganyan kung ano, galit ka sa taong kausap mo. At ang kausap niya ay ang Diyos. You know what Cain is really saying here? Alam niyo kung anong sinasabi ni Cain dito? Buisit na buisit siya na kausap niya ang Diyos. Bakit siya buisit? Kasi ang tingin niya, very narrow ang Diyos na hindi tinanggap ang kanyang handog na dinala niya. Na sa tingin niya ay pinagpaguran niya, sa tingin niya ay achievement niya. You know why I say that? Listen, if he was true lover of God, if he was true believer, if he had genuinely come to know salvation, when his sacrifice was rejected, ano usual ang gagawin niya? Kung siya itunay naman na ng palataya. He would have been what? Broken. Dapat doon pa lang nagpakumbaba na siya sa Diyos. Tama? Nagsisi. Lord, sorry ha. Kasi nawaglit sa isip ko. Sorry talaga pero hindi. No sign of remorse. No sign of repentance but full of sign of what? Arrogance. Hindi ba ganyan ang mga hindi mana ng palataya? Wala naman akong kasalanan. Hindi mo naman ako kagaya. Tama? He would have been heartbroken. He would have been literally devastated and shattered, sabi niya. Nakatulad ni Peter na talagang nag humagulgol sa Panginoon. Pero si Cain, no. He's just mad. He's angry about the narrowness of Abel. He's angry at, 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 at God because God has not accepted him as an equal. What kind of God are you that favors Abel over me? Yan ang nasa isip niya. He's very angry with God. In fact, the Hebrew implies the idea of inward heat rising up into his face. Namumula siya. Ibig sabihin, yung galit, di ba ganyan tayo? Yung galit, tinitimpi, umaakyat hanggang sa ulo. Kung bakit kaya siya ay namumula. Furious. And that is the prototype of unbeliever. The unbeliever is angry at believers. Angry at true believers because he is angry with God. Amen. I hope you are not like that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we have learned so much from these brothers, O oh God. We are not finished yet, Lord. We still have things to know about this first family. But God, thank you that indeed in worship it is an expression of what is who really are, O oh Lord, in, in, in your sight. And the outward manifestation, O oh Lord, is just the manifestation of what is inside of us. Lord, thank you for teaching us Thank you for loving us. Lord, lagi mo po kaming kahabagan, Panginoon, ng pag-iisip na kung saan in this life, ang pinaka-prioridad namin, O Diyos, 
Sa buhay na ito ay mabigyan ka ng kaluwalhatian sa lahat po ng aming gagawin, iisipin, at sasalitain. Father, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.